This week I've got three movies, and I'm going to start with Hunter Killer, which objectively, I acknowledge, is not a particularly good film. That did not stop me from enjoying parts of it. Look, I've been watching a ton of heavy, heady Oscar bait films recently, and sometimes you just want to watch some sort of dumb film. So it stars Gerard Butler, Gary Oldman, Common, Michael Nyquist, Linda Cardellini, and Toby Stevens, and Gerard Butler plays a submarine captain in the U.S. Navy? And he uses an American accent, but they don't really explain how... I, it, whatever. Gerard Butler plays the submarine captain. Gary Oldman plays the chief of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And I'm like, man, Gary Oldman, how'd you go from The Darkest Hour to Hunter Killer? Like, does that dude just take any movie as long as he can kind of be screamy in it? So he plays you know, high-up military man. Common plays a rear admiral. And again, the last thing I saw Common in was The Hate You Give. And I'm like, who's making these casting decisions? Like, who, how are their agents picking these roles? Unfortunately, this is one of Michael Nyquist's last roles. He was in the Swedish versions of The Girl with the dragon tattoo and i think he's actually a really good actor and it's unfortunate he passed away from lung cancer linda cardellini who in my mind will just always be from freaks and geeks uh, plays a cia or an nsa operative or something like that spy intelligence and toby stevens plays some sort of i think he's an army ranger or something like that so basically the russians are the enemy what a surprise and there's a coup happening and most of the plot of this film is given away in the trailer so if you liked the trailer you're gonna probably enjoy the movie it's not gonna make you think no world other russians ever the good guys pretty much so you know there's some sort of standoff and they have to send a submarine or a hunter killer captained by gerard butler to go explore and then there's this whole insane plot where there's a coup taking place and some crazy russian dude kidnaps the russian president and so they have to go save the russian president on russian soil and i'm just like oh this is absurd. This is insane. I also wonder when this went into production because they have like a quasi sympathetic Russian president. And I'm like, are you trying to be like a weird propaganda thing? Also, is this a weird propaganda thing for the Navy? I'm not sure what's happening here. Oh, apparently Toby Stevens leads the Navy SEALs, not the Army Rangers. Just to, And I, I also would love love to hear anyone who's been on a submarine's experience with like I've, if you if you see this film and have been on a submarine please let me know what you think of it because it seems insane the, gerard butler makes like 10 million all submarine uh, he gets on like the intercom and makes all these like pontificating speeches about like inspiring the troops and stuff like that and we're going in guys and you know this or that and I just like has this ever happened in the history of war has anyone ever gone on a submarine intercom and just said any of the things you say but Sometimes you just want to watch a good guys, bad guys battle without having any questions of morality and you know it's black and white and yeah, I, in that aspect, like, I found it enjoyable. Also, question for, again, I guess anyone who has experience with submarines, how fast can a submarine pivot? Because these are really like some pretty quick moving and agile subs. Again, I don't know on the topic, it might be accurate. There are definitely a lot of scenes where I was like, oh, these are either the best special effects I've ever seen, or again, this is why part of me thinks it might have been like a Navy propaganda piece, or like, these are really like close up shots of an actual submarine. Hunter killer is exactly what it promises to be. Nothing more, nothing less. If you enjoyed the trailer, you'll be fine with the film. I cannot give it higher than like a two and a half, and I think that's being generous, but I will give it like an asterisk and like, look, if you just want to see some dumb popcorn movie, literally somebody in the middle of the movie left and got popcorn and came back and was eating it super aggressively during, I was like, yeah, that's probably the right choice for this film. So that's the type of movie it is. Uh, two and a half out of five, but with the caveat of it, you could probably see it and enjoy it. The next film I have is mid nineties, and I wanted to like this film. I heard such good things about this film. It's directed and written by Jonah Hill. And basically it's about the like a little kid in the 90s in LA and he's part of the skate scene. And clearly it's very authentic. And clearly there's a lot of stuff in this film that I'm sure speaks true to the time. Here are some of my problems with it. I was frustrated i think our language has evolved since the mid 90s like i have lived through the mid 90s and more and there are certain words that have fallen out of favor in in common everyday use and i think with good reason and they were words that were used quite commonly and quite they're very offensive words now but you know in the 90s like nobody knew any better and so it was it was common to call someone a fag or use gay as a slur or i in this case i this is still its own sort of cultural question and you know depends on your background and all this stuff but like the n-word is thrown around a ton in this movie but like i was like oh or retard and stuff like that and i was like i it just triggered something in me that i like my skin was crawling and my back was hunched and i was just like i don't like hearing these words again just like 
constantly and repeatedly and god forbid that kids think like oh it's okay to use like this movie's rated r it's not for kids but if a kid were to see this somehow and then be like oh it's cool to use these words again like these are words i don't want to re-enter the common tongue and this might be a weird gender thing but i don't remember using those words in the mid 90s and i don't remember a lot of my female friends using them but it definitely does feel like it was a dude thing to do especially the the homophobic stuff like that was the ultimate insult is to call you know be gay or whatever which is so terrible so that was already like a frustrating point to start. It's about a bunch of skate kids. Um, Sonny Siljic, who I actually think is a pretty good actor, plays the main character, is Stevie. His older brother's played by Lucas Hedges, who is just good. also one of those people who's just in everything right now. He'll do, he'll do any role, apparently. He was almost unrecognizable. He plays his older brother. Catherine Watterson plays their mother. It's clearly not like the healthiest of families. And then he, uh, Sonny Siljic's character, Stevie, meets all these other uh, characters played by real skaters, um, Nikel Smith, Ryder McLaughlin, who are both pretty well-known skaters and there's a couple sporting cast and you can tell that they all like have a decent rapport and are friends and stuff like that but this is my other thing about the film (laughs) like there didn't feel like there was a character arc there didn't feel like there was a plot which yes a movie doesn't necessarily have to have like an a to b linear plot but there needs to be character development then right like i need to go on some sort of journey during the course of a film and i do not feel like i did that i felt like i was in arrested film but there are also parts of this that i was like really uncomfortable with uh, this is a spoiler i think a line is crossed when you watch someone who's playing like a 13 year old and i think the kid isn't even 13 making out and like getting hot and heavy with a young woman who's supposed to be i could i'm gonna guess like no older than 16 but like is clearly like a developed young woman and the the amount that they show of it just like feels like pedophilia and child porn and like i'm like i don't i I cannot fathom anyone aside from essentially a pedophile who would be like attracted to a young boy like that like he is the body of a young boy and i i only know this because unfortunately they like show the kid without a shirt on they show her without a shirt it's just that scene alone made this film so beyond uncomfortable for me i also the way that women are portrayed in this film so not about it i i cannot stand I get that it's like supposed to be about boys and like their bond and all that sort of stuff, but that doesn't mean that every woman in this movie has to be some sort of one-dimensional horrible character. Like the Catherine Watterson as the mom maybe has some depth, but she's not particularly portrayed in the most flattering light. Like I don't think they necessarily go out of their way to like be horrible about her, but the way they portray the young women, I'm like disgusted by. I don't think in good conscience I could recommend this movie to anybody. I didn't enjoy watching it. I think it unfortunately pretty accurate to the time it's trying to capture but that doesn't mean i have to enjoy watching it it doesn't mean it takes me on like a good journey if you really love skating that much and want to watch skating stories just watch skating videos or something like that i was talking to a friend out during the film and i was like i don't know who i would recommend this film to like i don't know who i'd who i know who'd want to watch this movie and so i cannot in good conscience recommend it i can't you know it's just one of those things where i'm like why was this movie made it's it's a selfish you know like i had the money and funding to make this film and i got it made and i'm only gonna give it 1.8 out of 5 it's not the worst worst thing i've seen but again i don't ever want to watch it again i don't know who i would tell to watch it so i guess there's an audience out there for it but i don't i don't necessarily think i want to associate with that audience so i'll leave it at that the last film i have is called can you ever forgive me and this is definitely an oscar grab and it stars melissa mccarthy as lee israel who was a real person uh, she was a celebrity biographer who basically wrote you know a bunch of biographies that i don't think a ton of people read and so she was pretty strapped for cash pretty also reclusive it seems you know she was like a crazy cat lady basically but then one day she decided to start forging memorabilia and like letters from famous people and so she would kind of figure out how to adopt their personality and their style and she would write as them essentially and she took like it seems like based on this she took great pleasure in it and inhabiting the minds of these people and she makes friends with a character called jack hawk played by richard e grant who i always enjoy watching he's he tends to play a lot of the similar characters of these kind of crazy camp over the top maybe with a substance abuse problem characters so they become like they form an unlikely friendship and then it kind of follows her hijinks and she meets characters along the way i also had a question like her husband has like a small part in it i was like is in her writer that he has to be in all of her movies like i'm sure of course they enjoy collaborating together but it's one of those things just like huh 
I wonder if she like actually negotiates on his behalf. So overall, I think the story is very interesting. There's a, there's actually like a sort of an LGBTQ undercurrent to it because uh, she's a lesbian. Her friend Jack is gay. There's the, you know, that's an aspect of it. But it's, it's interesting to see her kind of go through the process of committing these forgeries. It's not a story I was familiar with before. I always prefer seeing original stories. And it seems like there aren't a ton out there these days. But as far as adaptations and like based on true stories go, this was definitely an interesting one. So I'm actually going to give it four out of five. It was a good performance piece. I enjoyed the characters. You know, it's also Melissa McCarthy in like a slightly understated role. She's still, for lack of a better word, like slightly grotesque. But that's only because of the character she's playing. And it's not like broad grotesque. It's just literally like, oh, this person is le- leading like a sad life. This person's like very aggressive. Like you understand why this person maybe doesn't have a lot of friends. But it's, it was a very nice change to see her in. So I, you know, I don't know in terms of nominations if this is actually going to do it. But it still was worth watching. So like I said, four out of five. 